T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, all three engines up and burning, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Coach on fire radio. I am the sky. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the movement. You are live on Success Movement Radio. My name is Sean Wyman. I am so honored to be the host of this show and very, very excited for the show that we have for you today. So first, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas and are just having a great time during the holiday season. And I am so excited because... Today, I have one of the most amazing people that I just recently met that is going to share some awesome, awesome inside tips about radio. So if you are a coach, if you are a speaker, if you are an author, or even like for myself, a brand new published author, then you are going to want to uh, listen to this whole show in its entirety because there is going to be a lot of great information shared. So before we get started, I want to remind everybody that you can call in and talk to our guests live. The telephone number for that is 646-716-7979. That's 646-716-7979. So with that, we are going to go ahead and get started. If you have a question for our guest as, as things start to go, then feel free to call into the show, and we will do our best to get you on live with us. So with that being said, I am so excited to introduce, man, I don't even know where to begin, uh, mother, uh, amazing wife, uh, top gospel radio show of 108 Praise Radio in Atlanta, Georgia, and she's got a brand new show that I'm going to let her share with you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Angela Foxworth. What's up, Angela? How are you doing tonight? Welcome to the movement. Hey, thank you so much, Sean. I am so excited. Let me tell you, that introduction is amazing. It really gets you hyped for what we have in store tonight. <laughs> Uh, awesome, Angela. So if you would, share a little bit about yourself, where you're at now, and just let our audience get to know you a little bit. Well, my name is Angela Foxworth. My pen name is A. Fox, and I come to everybody from Hiram, Georgia, which is on the outskirts of Atlanta. And I am here on the set of 108 Praise Radio, which is the station that is near and dear to me. And that is also where my show is every Monday night from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a wife. I am a mother of two, two adult children. 20 years old um, is my daughter Alicia, 23, my son Christopher, my husband Stephen Foxworth, who is actually in the studio uh, supporting me tonight. And, um, you know, loving what I do as a radio talk show host. And we are actually internet, radio, and television. Um, we did the television piece starting in January of this year, and it is really catapulted into a whole new arena and next level of radio. Very, very excited. And, you know, I'm just here actually, you know, a part of your movement, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, so, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So what she forgot to mention is she is the gospel radio slash television internet show host of over 9 million viewers based <laughs> out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and, and she's so humble about it, but the show is absolutely amazing. And you got such an awesome team over there. So how long have you been in radio now? Literally, this is going into the second year. Um, you know, I'm actually will be into my third year probably by March, I believe, is when I initially started. 
uh, on the set. And literally, we started in our bedroom. And let me explain that because every time I tell someone that, they kind of laugh about it. But uh, at that particular time, we were radio only. And we would, I would be in my PJs and we would be talking about um, this amazing show. And at that particular time, we only had, I want to say when I came on board, I think Courtney had been up and running about six months. And when I joined him, we literally had maybe a thousand or so listeners to date at that particular point in time. And everything was brand new and literally just from you know, doing what we love, you know, having a show for me, my show is all about promoting change and positive energy for the world. I really want when someone calls in, I interview with a purpose. And my purpose is that, you know, someone get inspired. If they were depressed, they'll find a way to, you know, get out of their depression and get motivated. If they feel like they've lost hope in a certain area, I want them to tune in every, you know, uh, subject that we come up with for my show is in direct relation of changing someone's life in a positive way. Beautiful. Hey, can you believe it? We've already got a phone call. Are you ready to take a phone call? All right. Yes, let's do it. Yeah, let's take a quick, we're going to take a quick call. So we've got area code... 770, welcome to the movement. You are live with Sean and Angela. How are you doing tonight? Well, maybe. Can you hear me, Angela? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Hey, you're live on the air. Looks like they might have hung up. Okay, maybe they got camera shy. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's something about All the right, word so we'll live, they get nervous. <laughs> right, right. So let's, let's, everybody has a story and I've only got to hear a little bit of your story, but I know it's a, it's a beautiful and it's very powerful. And you know, everybody always sees the success, but they don't really ever get a chance to hear the journey prior to the success, right? Yes. So with that being said, tell us a little bit about your journey. And where, where you started and, 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 and to, to get, I mean, obviously I know you can't go that long because right. we'd be here all night, <laughs> but just touch on it a little bit for us, if you would, Angela. Yes, sir. Um, actually, I love uh, to even tell this snippet of my life story because I, I started late in life. I am 43 years old and I started this journey at 40. Um, you know, was a housewife, still, in, you know, I still am, you know, raised my kids and then just decided at 40 years old, I think um, you come into a point in your life where you do kind of like a reassessment. And at that particular time, I felt like things in my life were going backwards, not forward. And I really had kind of gone, you know, gone into a deep depression. And just through a series, what, what I believe are divine events, because that's usually what tends to happen, I've been wanting to be an internet talk show host since I was 11 years old. I remember being a kid and looking in the mirror and saying, hey, I'm going to be the next Oprah Winfrey. I cannot wait for this to happen for me. And that has always been my dream. But when life happened, I had to put everything aside. So when I did this reassessment and I'm praying in the closet one night, literally in my closet and I'm crying, I'm thinking things are not going great right now for me and I don't feel like I'm fulfilled through just a vision that the Lord had given me. And I know that it, it again, that it came from God because at that particular time, I couldn't even think straight because things were so off kilter. And I moved into this area that I'm in now and it was unfamiliar territory for me. And I saw a vision after everything had taken place. And in this vision, um, I was standing on a beach. I was on white sand. I was overlooking turquoise seas. And at that particular time, my health was in a better shape because I, I wasn't as healthy when I first started and was depressed. And then, you know, I saw myself on this beach with a white suit on. And in the, in the vision, I'm kind of, you know, I have a personality, you know, I say all the time, God definitely had to have a sense of humor when he created me. And the funny thing I was saying, God, you know, I look so good on this beach. Why am I in a white business suit? Shouldn't I be in a white bikini? This is my <laughs> mode of thinking, okay? And with that being said, I heard so clearly the white represents new beginnings because this time next year your life will never be the same. 
So I fast forward a little mm. bit and I go into where I meet someone and they started me on this business venture in travel, which is stuff something that I love to do. And I never thought that by doing this, what I call a little travel business, changed everything for me because I began to meet people who were business, you know, minded and goal oriented. And I learned words like posture and believing in yourself. And, you know, long story short, I began to start presenting at these, you know, um, functions for like our travel parties. And it became such a niche that people just started to say, hey, can we hear that Angela Foxworth again? I love to hear her story. It was so inspiring. And I, I'm at an event one day and I run into my producer who I'm with right now. And he says, hey, I want to get, you know, I want her to be a part of my network. I really think she's good. And that is how our relationship began. And we literally started with nothing. I mean, he had this vision and he had this equipment and he's a brain, the brain behind all of the operations, but we really didn't know how huge it was going to grow for us. We just knew this was something we desired in our heart and always to make a difference in the community. And that's what it's all about. And that's how I've landed, you know, this particular opportunity. And it's just continued to grow and we're now next level, and it's exciting. Yes, that is so cool, Angela. So, hey, let's take a breath, because I know that was a mouthful, and I'm going to give you a second. you got so much energy. I love your energy. You talk about my energy, man. You've got a ton of it. So let's let's take a phone call. Okay. We got uh, This may be our caller from earlier. Let's see here. Let me see if I can get them connected. So okay. this is going to be area code 770. Welcome to the movement. You are live with Sean Wyman and Angela Foxworth. Can you hear us? And they disconnected, but that's okay. We got another call, okay. Angela. Hang on one second. Okay. Let's see. Hey, welcome to the movement, area code 404. You are live. Can you hear us? Yes. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Who are we speaking to? Hello, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, Hi. great. How are you doing? What's your name? Diane Smith. Hi, Diane. Great to connect with you. Do you have a question for Angela? Uh, no, I don't have a question. I just wanted to listen in. Oh, awesome, Hi. awesome. So you're Thank just you, calling Diane. in to listen in? Yes. Okay, well, well, we'll mute you back out. No problem. Thank you for, Thank you. for joining us. Thank you. All right, so they should close that out. Okay, all right, and we got one more, Angela. Okay. Hang on here. Okay. Hey, welcome to the movement. You're live with Sean and Angela. How are you doing? Hello. I don't know. It's that one number. It keeps getting disconnected. I apologize to whoever this is. Okay. I'm not sure, but the number keeps getting disconnected, so we'll have to try again here in a minute. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why that's not working. I've got tons of people calling in, though. Awesome. So that's that definitely a good problem to have, right? Let's try this one here. Hey, welcome to the movement. You're live with Sean and Angela. How are you doing? Hello? Nope, nothing on that one either. Okay. So they're like dead lines. One more. All right. Hey, welcome to the movement. You're live with Sean and Angela. How are you doing? Hello? Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. This is Greta, Angela's big sister. Hi, Greta. In. What's up, Greta? <laughs> What's up? People must not be talking because I'm connected. But when you connect to the star of the show, you ain't got to worry about whether you're going to lose the connection on the phone. So that's why I'm here. You know what I'm saying? There you go. There you go. So do you have a question for your sister? I sure do. I have a question. I want her to tell people how she stays motivated because she always sounds so bubbly. And people probably think it's not real, but it really is real. But I want her to tell, tell people how she stays motivated, how she keeps her focus to be so driven with, her, with following her vision and the dream that God has placed on her life. 
Oh, that's a great question. Wow, that's question. a great question, Angela. Yes, it is. It is. Thank you so much, Greta, uh, just for your support and even calling in. And to be honest with you, I absolutely love answering this question because it is you. You all keep me motivated because, again, when you're doing something that you're passionate about, it, you're going to have a natural drive toward it. The reason why I just can't, you know, um, wallow in, in being depressed and being sad when things don't work out is because I always feel like if I just hold on a little longer, I'm going to see the glory that God has for me. And that's in even the mm. small things, you know. It, it's as, as basic as as long as I know I have, what you know, um, seen a, woke up to see another day, then I know that he has a purpose for me and he wants me to continue fulfilling it. And that is what drives Beautiful. me. I want to change lives. And that is what this is all about for me. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow, thank you. Did that answer your question? <laughs> it's right, but I knew the answer. But I, I want to encourage other yes. people. Because yes. a lot of people are scared to step out and follow their dreams. So sometimes yes. you just got to do it. And once you're out there in it, you just got to roll with it. So I just want her to answer that for the listeners. That's all. Oh, you. well, Greta, thank you for calling in. Awesome. It's such an honor to speak to you. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to copy your number so I can call you back and get some dirt on her. Because I know she just can't be this perfect. There's got to be some dirt. Well, I hope um, you got some money. <laughs> hey, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for calling in. No problem. Oh, let's see what we got, Angela. We got more here. All right. Hey, thanks for calling. You're, you're welcome to the movement. You're with Angela and Sean. How are you doing? Yeah, it's that, one, it's that same number. I'm not sure why it keeps going dead. Okay. Okay. And we're going to do one more, and then we're going to get back to some questions here. Okay. So, okay. Area Code 404, welcome to the movement. You're live with Sean and Angela. How are you doing? Hello. Can you hear us? I hear something on the end, but I, yeah, yeah, I, I do don't know. Too. Okay. Oh, can you hear us? Hello? Okay. <laughs> all right, so let's get back to some questions, Angela, because if we answer the phone all night, I'll miss out on half the stuff that I need to get out with you. So <laughs> let's let's talk about radio. Let's talk about, because that's what the audience here, right? A lot of these people are business owners. Yes. They're entrepreneurs. They're new, new authors uh, like myself. They are... Um, you know, speakers, and they are looking for vehicles to build their reach, to get their to get their reach out there nationally and internationally. So I want to get into the nitty gritty of this. I want to talk about. I mean, you've done a lot of interviews with people, right? People yes. that have reached out to you and said, "Hey, how do I get on your show?" Or you know, so I, I would love for you to share. Let's just say, if you could share your top three mistakes let's start with the mistakes the top three mistakes that people make when they're applying for interviews with your show because your show i mean there's a time delay there's a wait now because you've got so many viewers yes. you got people just waiting in line to get into your show so what is it what are the biggest mistakes that people make when they're trying to get out there and get on these shows well, to be honest with you, I, I, to me personally, and this is just me knowing what I did to have to, you know, um, become a part of this, people quit. You know, if they get one rejection, they're done for the rest of their life. To me, that's one of the biggest mistakes because if as long as, well, I'll say this. If you have a purpose, one of the biggest mistakes is some people just want to be, they want 15 minutes of fame and have absolutely no purpose for why they want to do what they do. That is one of the biggest mistakes, trying to get in and not have a niche or a core audience or even just a plan on what you want to do and what you want your show to be all about. So I would say that would be the first mistake, but... In the event you try, you know, one radio network and they tell you no, a lot of times from that one rejection, you stop trying. I feel like it's just like with calling a cable company. If you call the cable company enough times, you're going to get somebody that says yes. 
We say it in direct marketing all the time. You get through your nose so you can find your yes. And that is what you have right. to do. You know, you have to find a, a station that benefits what you're trying to promote or what you're trying to put out. And it has to match. They have to feel like it's going to be beneficial for them as a radio network. And you have to feel like it's going to be beneficial for your audience. So not knowing what your purpose is, is definitely a huge error when you're trying to get in radio. That's huge. So you got that, guys? Number one, you need to, number one, not give up. Don't don't accept rejection. Just because somebody tells you no doesn't mean – you just never know what's going on. The timing might not be right. Um, you know, the you know, something else might be lined up for that show. And you never know when, you know, something happens and all of a sudden they need somebody at the last minute – and they may reach out to you depending on your actions, yes. the way you behave and your mannerisms and your professionalism when you're dealing with somebody. And secondly, don't come to any broadcast without a purpose, without a direction, yes. and without it being mutually beneficial. I kind of heard that in there too, Angela, right? Yes. It shouldn't be just what the person can, can get out of the show, but what you can give to the show. So when you're calling in or you're trying to connect for an interview, think about those things, about how am I going to deliver value? What is the value I'm going to bring to the audience? Is this the right audience for the content that I have? Am I on the right point so far? Yes, sir, you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even with okay. people who become so, a part of a radio network, a lot of times, too, you know, if you're trying to brand yourself, you try to use the radio station as leverage in order to do that. But again, there's a process that goes with that. You can't just come into a network and think instantly you're going to be a star. And I think that's another thing that people, you know, uh, tend to get confused and make mistakes when they're trying to build their brand through radio. Absolutely. So any, any other mistakes that you can think of or, or things that you've seen that people do that you're just like, man, I can't believe that they're doing this. Well, and, it, you know, it might be someone that, like, when you met them, you're like, yeah, this is going to be a great guest, and then something happens. Well, you know, you have to be careful about what you put out on, you know, your social media. Um, we do look at that, especially if you're a station like we're 108 – Praise Radio. Now, I always preference not every show is a Christian show, but we do have family-oriented shows and things that are going to be, you know, life-changing in a positive way. Now, that doesn't mean we don't get controversial or we don't have topics that are uncomfortable, but at the same time, you need to know where you're going. If it is a you know, a, a Cavalier station that doesn't mind profanity, that doesn't mind, you know, whatever the case may be, then you can, whatever your social media is, if you tend to be a little bit obnoxious, then you know that's the platform. They're going to be okay with that. But you can't live, a, you know, a crazy life outside of trying to do something with, you know, a radio station that may not support that. So be very careful and mindful of mature social media. You know, you can have fun and enjoy yourself and do, you know, funny things. You just have to be careful who you're trying to market when you're looking for a radio station. I think that's really important, Angela. And, and congruency, right? Does yes. your – so in other words, does your purpose that you're bringing to the show, does that align or are you just telling the show one thing, but then you're living a totally different life on the outside and, and – you know, somebody that has a serious show like what you guys have, you guys go do the homework. You do the research. Yes. You don't just say yes right out of the gate without looking at people and validating that they are who they say they are. So yes. uh, that's that's great information. I hope you guys are writing this stuff down because there is some great tips being put out right now. Anything else, Angela, on that side? Um. Right now, not really um, that I can think of, uh, you know, again, those are the most, to me, those are core. And if you have those in line and in place, then you should be very good as you're, you know, marketing and, and researching a radio station. Absolutely. So when 
when you say marketing and research, and let's get into the positive side of things, right? Mm-hmm. What are things that, like, what are the things that you, as a radio show host, what are the things that you're looking for, the quality uh, things that you're looking for for a guest? Okay, so my show, and I, and I love this question because it is only specific, actually, to my show. Generally speaking, again, mm-hmm. you're trying to find a show. What what I would be looking for is something that is, you know, um, resonates with my audience and is in line with my vision. So I call myself the cheerleader for the underdogs because I'm an underdog. So a lot of times when people ask me to do a show, the first thing I ask them is, what are you, you know, what is the purpose of you wanting to be on the platform? What will you be saying? You know, if you're a musician and you want to, you know, promote your music, is there a story behind that? You know, a lot of times great things come out of tragedy. So my show is about overcoming. It's about discussing things that are not comfortable. So what I'm looking for is something that is going to change lives. Again, I'm interviewing with a purpose in mind. And that purpose is to save somebody in my audience. If I'm talking about domestic violence, then I'm looking for someone who may have overcome that. And that way they can be encouragement to someone else. If we're talking about racism, I want someone who's vocal and who doesn't mind being transparent in a respectful way so that we can promote change and common ground. So uh, I'm, what I'm looking for is who's going to match that on my show. Gotcha. So if we're looking at that, let's just, well, we can look at that in general too, though, right? Yes, because we can. any show that you go to, you should be doing the research to make sure you're not wasting your time. Do the research and look at the show and identify if it is the right show for whatever it is you want to market, whether it's a book and whatever your book's about or yes. it's a speaking opportunity or a, a workshop or a nonprofit organization or yes. whatever the case may be, right? So, again, we, we come to that word congruency, making sure that everything's in congruent, consistency, Making sure that everything's consistent, that everything lines up the way it's supposed to, and uh, you know, most importantly, that you, that it's mutually beneficial. I think this is something that that I've learned, and I believe this is one of the reasons why you and I connected so well yes. was we quickly identified how we could make it mutually beneficial. You can't make it all about what's in it for me. That's right. You've got to on what's in it for the show what value are they going to get putting you out there what i mean nine million viewers man what what is the value that you're going to deliver to nine million viewers that's going to make an impact that's, right. that's going to cause for positive ratings for that show right because radio shows are all about the ratings as far as yes. you know how many listeners how many replays and and how much connection and more importantly how many come back after that show that's right and that is what you're looking for you're looking for someone to you know internet radio television is the future so we're kind of like in a ground floor opportunity you know as we build these networks because right now you know you have your mainstream we're in a society that believes in convenience right you like to just turn on the television and watch your show so when you have an internet radio television platform that is actually, you know, not always convenient for everyone. So you have to tug at the heart of your listeners and have, you know, and find that interest to make them want to go from the television to the internet and find that there is more purity, there's more, you know, rawness, there's more truth, you know, as they're listening to shows because we're not syndicated like people on regular TV where in mainstream you can only say certain things and the internet right now anything goes. So in order to get people to understand that, you definitely, that's how you're, you know, uh, marketing your radio show and the kind of listeners that you do want reoccurring listeners to continue, you know, growing with you. They're, that means they're interested in what you have to say. They feel like you do have value. And I'm going to tell you, um, I'm going to go back to Sean on research. That is so critical I have people all the time who will tell me they're ready and they want to show and really they just want 15 minutes of fame in my book because they've not had any type of research, whether it be the industry, 
whether it be even their own niche for whatever audience they're trying to capture. Look at subject matter mm -hmm. experts. I have people in the field of radio that I aspire to be. My Oprah Winfrey, she's first and foremost number one Oprah, I love you. Angela Foxworth loves Oprah Winfrey. That is my, you know, all-time idol. I watch her. I see how she genuinely cares about people. I don't necessarily emulate her style, but she's definitely someone that I, you know, take critiques from in my own, you know, craft. I look at, you know, Soledad O'Brien. I look at Tavis Smiley, Barbara Walters, Diane Sawyer. These are people in the industry that I study and I watch what they do so that I can continue to be an expert in my craft. A lot of people do not do that. They feel like because they may be a little funny or a little talented that they can get on the radio and build an audience from that. It doesn't always happen that way, you know. You definitely want to research, and if there's people that you look up to, see what their journey was. Find out what they did. Google is your friend. I tell anybody that. You get online, you can find as much information about anything that you're trying to do, but research is critical. Wow, man. So much, so much value. So much value. So I think another thing that um, that I've, I've been hearing, even though we haven't really said it straight out, is the personalities, right? The personalities need to be able to connect. There needs to be some type of connection there. Just yes. like if you're in direct sales, right? You're yes. not going to go out and and I'm not going to I'm not going to walk in and say buy my book without connecting with you, getting to know you, identifying where your, you know, where your situation is at, identifying where the need is, and then coming in with a solution that may be my book as part of that. Exactly. Exactly. You do want to get to know your audience. Now, as you're building, you may not always have the opportunity, but as a radio personality, and especially, you know, if this is something that you're trying to do, not just a hobby, but for a career, then it is very important when you network and when you make connections, you do get to know your audience. You get to know the people that you're speaking with. You invest in them. And that is what's going to build going forward because they feel like you have a vested interest in them. They have a vested interest in you. And that is, you know, critical as you're building an audience as well. And I'm actually going to even say be unique. You know, there are a lot of different shows out there and there's different niches for each, you know, um, group. And, you know, there's somebody for everybody. It's just like a relationship. You're going to find something that works for you. But what is critical is if you have a certain niche, try to be a little bit outside of the box and do something different than what you've seen them do. People, you know, sometimes get gets tired of status quo. They want to see someone that's, you know, unique or different or more outspoken and, you know, not doing the same thing. Heck, we just witnessed that, you know, with politics. So... You know, sometimes you have to kind of go outside, be unique, be different, stand out, and do something a little bit more than what you see someone else is doing. That creativity also builds your audience and really helps you as you continue in, in the radio field. And, and when you're, you know, prospecting stations and it's something that you want to sell to them, that is what's going to catch their eye is that she's a little bit different than the Oprah Winfrey show or she does a little bit more than what Ellen does. You know, th that's also a great tool for, you know, saturating radio and, and getting your foot in the door. Right. So let's say, like for me, right, I have a new book. So, and I'm not really looking to be a radio show host. I'm not looking to do that. But I just want to promote my book on your show. I want to, or I want to promote my book on a television show. I want to get... You know, and I feel like there's a lot of value that I can offer. Where, where, where does someone start, Angela? Where do they start? Because there's a lot of new authors, man. I know. Yes. I mean, I know a ton of them. Yes. Um, and I know you do too. Yes. So where do they start? Where's a good start point for them? Do they pick up the phone? Do they write an email? Do they? I mean, where do they start? You do them all. You know, you start with an email. 
you follow up with a phone call. This is where research is critical. You get to, you know, if you see a station that you feel like is going to be perfect for your book or for what you're trying to write, go ahead and see what they're all about. Look up their public relations department. Find out what their process is, you know, as it relates to you coming on board and, you know, wanting to get your book out. See what the fees are, if there are fees associated with it. See if they have some type of a, you know, a, a calendar where they're allowing, you know, sometimes you have like, um, I'll give like the Oprah Book Club, you know, they'll allow one book a month, you know, if they feel like it's a, a good, you know, fit, then they'll put it in rotation. Those kinds of things you know, you have to do your research on, but I say touch on everything because when you're trying to sell, you know, your book and especially when it's life changing, you want to utilize every avenue you possibly can. So you want to write your emails to anyone, you know, that you're interested in that you think would be a great fit for your book. And then the same thing with the radio stations. If, you, if you've got to come in and call, sometimes you can walk through the door of local stations. They, they always have people to come in and be able to speak to their book or what they have. So it's just all about getting yourself out there, but do not stop. Just saturate as much as you can. And with social media, that's where you can leverage an audience. Because, you know, if you come to me, Sean, and you have 6,000 people following you on social media, you know, those kind of numbers, even though they seem very minute to a radio station, they're looking like, hey, he's on an upward, you know, he's going to be hitting that pretty hard if he's gotten... 6,000 in X amount of time, that must be a good book. And when you talk about being on platforms like Amazon and, you know, other, uh, you know, um, publishers, when you get that notoriety and it continues to build, that's attractive to a station. So it won't even be as difficult as you may think by the time you're ready to try to prospect a radio, you know, station to look at your book or at least do an interview so that you can get your book advertised. Very nice, very nice. So, hey, guys, welcome to the movement. You are listening to Sean and my special guest, Angela Foxworth, tonight. The call-in number, there's been so much gold in this show so far. The call-in number is 646-716-7979. If you have a question for Angela and you want to talk to her live, you can call in. The telephone number, again, is 646 716 Seven nine seven nine, and so Angela, man, you are given so much great information about just everything, right? And I just know that there's a lot of people out there that just they, they just don't know where to start, you know. So that that tip right there, you go everywhere, and your social media does matter. It does, you yes. know, you know your followers, and and not just that, but. Like you said, you go and you research their social media and you're looking at, you know, is it consistent? Is it congruent? Are they putting a positive message out there? Does the message align with what our viewers want? Yes. So, I mean, and just, wow, man, really good stuff. Thank you so much. Oh, you are, and you know what's so funny about social media? This is the hilarious part. Before, uh, when, again, when I did the assessment and I first started, you know, in this, I am technically unsavvy. I am learning as I go, right? So I never, other than the very first time that I got on social media, which I think was like back in 2009, I had never really touched it. I might have put one picture or two out there every blue moon, but it was something that I didn't do on a regular basis, right? So I'm learning about travel, and they're saying, hey, when we do you know, this, you need to start marketing, and you need to put it on social media. I had no idea how in-depth Facebook was or what you needed to do. I did know that, hey, I can do a selfie because what he said was they need to see my face. So initially, when I first started out doing you know, selfies, literally, I would just take a picture in the office, and then I would um, send it out. And every time I would put something out about my travel, I would have my selfie attached to it. And I would always say, you know what? And, and people used to laugh and say, you are so vain. You're always putting something out thinking you're pretty. And I'm like, no, no, I promise that's not it. There is a method to the madness because what happens is when someone thinks about, hey, I want to travel or I want to do this, 
then guess what? They remember that picture as opposed to just a post. So then it just became second nature. And when you talk about being a radio personality and building a brand, you have to saturate your, you know, the audience that you're trying to get, meaning consistency. You, They need to see you all the time. So it's kind of like what I used to put in my mind. It's like a Taco Bell commercial, right? So not dissing Taco Bell or anything, but, you know, it's not like they're super authentic Mexican, you know? So, but people are going there all the time. Well, they go there because when you see the commercial, you know, think outside of the bun and you see it every minute of the day, all day long, guess what happens? Eventually your stomach's going to start growling. You're going to remember to think outside the bun and you're going to go to Taco Bell. I look at, you know, uh, on social media the same way. If you see me over and over and over again, eventually it's going to pique your interest to find out what is this chick all about? She is always laughing. She's always saying something, you know, kind of crazy. Her life is, you know, ridiculously humorous. I've got to find out who this Angela Foxworth is. And that's your niche. That's how you get out there. So you have to promote, promote, promote until it becomes second nature. That's so true, and I mean, and that turns right back to the new author, the speaker, the the yes. person that wants to, you know, have the conference, whatever it is. The same thing: good marketing saturation on social media in the positive light, and and not just selling, not just That's buy right. my book or buy my program or buy my product, but actual valuable and that was a key thing that you said there was valuable content yes. that is actually helping somebody that's serving somebody in some way and and you know when when people see that and and you'll start to you know like you can uh, you know what do you, let me ask you this let's go to this for a second mm -hmm. what do you think about linkedin using linkedin as an avenue to reach out to different uh you know like television hosts and media hosts and things like that well, you know what? I think all forms of, you know, social media are definitely important. I just think that like anything else, LinkedIn is a different demographic. Those are your professionals. So to be honest with you, you definitely want to begin to saturate that. I'm not, I got to be honest, I'm not as saturated on LinkedIn as I am on Instagram or Facebook, but it's definitely another market because guess what a lot of business people are on linkedin you know so that might be your money maker or that might be someone that would, would promote your book you have your you know scouts that you know frequent linkedin so it is definitely another form another avenue to use in saturating i even say pinterest because when you take certain pictures Again, people, oh, man, I, I think I saw this lady on Facebook. You know, you just never know. So as many as you can be a part of that you feel like are directly, you know, it's going to directly impact what your your product is, then you, you need to go for it. And, and, and it's absolutely, the, the you know, the way to go. I wouldn't discount any of the, you know, major social media outlets. Sure. So let's let's touch on this because we've talked about how to get started and things like that. Mm -hmm. Where should people look, and 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 what kind of like you know one of the things that comes to mind, for example, mm -hmm. is hashtag marketing, right? You talk mm -hmm. about Instagram, and the power of hashtag marketing. You know, a lot of people will say where can I find these top of the line radio show hosts? Like, where can I find these media people? that are going to, that, that, you know, that I can connect with, where, where would you recommend? Well, my, I would say initially for me, if I'm researching, I always go to the internet. I'm just going to get on Google and find out where are the top 10, you know, radio shows. If I'm looking for internet radio television, if I'm looking for local, I put that in and you start there. Um, it's definitely a starting point. Um, also, and, and in doing that, and you can pull up things on Facebook as well. I don't know if a lot of people realize Facebook is a bed of information, and it comes sometimes, and, you know, I know we have some of the, you know, false stuff out there, but the majority of people that are giving you this information, literally you can go into a different group 
and see if you can be added and they'll have a lot of pertinent information that you're looking for there are a, a ton of radio network um you know groups where it's just you guys supporting each other if you became a part of that group they'll give you key information uh that would would help you but you know for the first start of everything for me is google it's where i'm going to put my my search in and then i just kind of go from there and you just research until you you find what your fit is Sure. And I'm going to add one more to that because hashtag marketing is huge now. And, and like you could go on Instagram mm -hmm. and you could just hit hashtag radio host, exactly. hashtag top radio yes. shows, things like that, yes. and, and dig. And you'd be amazed at what you can find and research and, and people that you can connect with really simply just by yes. – doing a little bit of hashtag marketing. You can look at their Instagram posts and kind of see what they're about, what their shows are about, and, and connect with people that way as well. Exactly, exactly. And even YouTube. You know, if you want to actually see, you know, radio hosts or radio television hosts, go to YouTube, and once you've gotten your hashtags out of the way, look them up, see what, you know, what they're all about. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they are... I mean, it is becoming huge to even be discovered on YouTube. So you just never know who's mm -hmm. watching, and that is definitely something that you want to take heed to. And, and my biggest thing for, you know, people in the audience is just keep researching until you find what works for you. Again, I, I will tell anybody, when you get into this kind of business, and I don't care if it's selling a book, I don't care if you're trying to be you know, the, the next greatest actor, actress, radio personality, literally it is going to require, you know, effort on your part and your due diligence to keep pushing and pushing until you find exactly what it is that's going to match you. That consistency and that drive to keep moving, even when you're scared. Listen, Sean, I'm terrified daily. You know, um, this is definitely something that I want to do, but it does test you when you're in industries like this. It tests you on whether this is something you really want to pursue or not. Because, again, you have to learn to hear a no and, and accept it. You have to, you know, be willing to look past that. Because now, even people who don't believe in me or if I try to get on a higher platform that I'm on right now and they reject me initially, I always say in the back of my mind, boy, you're go wait till you see Angela Fosworth because we're going to be on the same playing field one of these good old mm -hmm. days. I flip it. You know, your mindset has to be that you're going to continue to pursue everything you can possibly do to get where you want to be. Absolutely. Hey, you ready to take a phone call? Sure. <laughs> All right, let's take a phone call. So we got area code 404. Let's see if it'll come on. Hey, welcome to the movement. You are live with Sean Wyman and Angela Foxworth. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. All right. Awesome. Who am I speaking to? I'm in Steve. Hi, Steve. Hey, Steve. <laughs> I, Is this I your husband? When I called in... I was actually going to ask her how do she break her fear, uh, but she kind of answered it a little bit. And I guess I, you know, how you have something in your mind and you want to jump out there and you kind of like doing a hokey pokey. You stick your right hand in, you stick your right hand. Yes. But you know, I'm. I wonder how do you stick with it? Like how do you break your fear of just. Diving in, you know, knowing that the water is going to catch you. You know, how yeah. do you break that barrier where even if no one else have your back or support, you know, how do you yourself, you know, be that one percenter, that, that niche, that, I'm, I guess, how do you break that fear cycle? Well, okay, you know, I, Angela, I, that's a great question. It is, it is. I don't ever, to be honest with you, know that you actually break it because, you know, again, I'm scared all the time. When it's time to actually step out and do something, you know, I'm always uh, nervous. I'm fearful that, you know, it may not go the way I want it to or that I may not ever be good enough. Um, but what I will say is 
courage, and this is what I found out, it is having that fear and doing it anyway. Because at the end of the day, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? And this is what I have to tell myself. If it doesn't work, we were talking uh, just on my show Monday night. Failure is a part of the process. If you don't fail, then you wouldn't know what to get back up and try again. And when you're destined, because I say this all the time, there is something inside of each and every last one of us that God has instilled in us to do. Now, whether or not you know what that is, you know there is something that you're passionate about. Whether it sounds crazy or whether it sounds, you know, that it's not doable, you have to push yourself into doing what you love. And once you do that, I think you're going to be driven anyway. For me, I've come too far to quit. That's what keeps me motivated. I just can't fathom giving up at this point when I've lost so much because, you know, Sean, we haven't even discussed that. But like you said, everything is a process. And there are losses that come mm -hmm. with that process. If I sit back now and say, oh, I'm just going to give up, then that means everything that I lost to get to this point, it's going to be all for nothing. I, I push myself daily because I have a family that believes in me. And even if they don't, I want them to, you know. So I want to be able to show them, see, we started from nothing. And look at what God has done because we keep pushing ourselves to that, that next level. And that's how you continue to just, you know, motivate yourself. And I'm going to tell you, I always say, even when we die and we go to heaven, okay, we're going to be one with God, period. So you have to learn to love yourself and trust that he has created you to do this amazing thing and that you're going to be responsible and do it. And leave the naysayers alone. Only surround yourself with supporters. Because when you're doing something like this, even though people love you, they care about you, they don't want to see you fail, and they, they have fears themselves, so they're going to tell you, no, 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 don't do that. You need to find yourself those one percenters that say, what are you doing? Get it together. Do it. Let someone that's going to be in your life push you to that next level. It's going to help you as you continue growing and elevating. Awesome. Great answer, Angela. Steve, thank you so much for calling in, my friend. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Steve. Wow. So we have got about eight minutes left. Okay. And I feel like we haven't even scratched <laughs> the surface of what we could have talked about. Because, yes, like sir. I said, your journey... Uh, and, and some of the challenges and things that you went through. Um, but you know what? I, I think it's important that we stay focused on on the topic of for people that are That's just right. getting started. It can be very intimidating, um, yes. you know, picking up the phone, making those phone calls, uh, positioning yourself in a place where you are uncomfortable. But unfortunately, you have to do it. If you really want to have the success, yes. you've got to face your fear, right? You've got to recognize yes. it. You've got to accept it. And then you've got to move past it. You've got to go, okay, there it is. I see it. I accept it. It is what it is. Yes. But it's not going to stop me. Now I'm just going to turn it into fuel, right? That's right. And I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it to my advantage now. And I've even done it where um, I'll, I'll get on the phone. I'll be like, Hey, excuse me if I sound a little bit nervous, but I'm just really excited to get to connect with you guys. Meanwhile, I'm like shaking, man, because, you know, but I turned that fear into excitement, right? Yes, so that, yes. so that you know, yeah, if you hear a little bit of stutter or nervousness in my voice, it's because I'm excited about the opportunity to speak with you and about, you know, what we can do together. And, and again, always focusing on making it mutually beneficial. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely. I, I, I know exactly what you mean, Sean, because sometimes you can feel like, you know, David in a world of Goliaths, you know, 
Um, and especially, like, I didn't have the capital when I first started. Um, you know, if there was a lot of things I could tell you that I didn't have, but what I did have was just this desire to want to make a difference. And I think that that is what separates what I call the men from the mice. When you have a desire and you keep pushing toward that and you're going to fight for that no matter what, that is what gives you the strength to continue pursuing whatever you, you do. And yes, it is overwhelming because there is a lot of information to take in, but take baby steps. You know, as an author, Sean, I'm sure you didn't just wake up one day and wrote a whole book, you know, and, and finish it. You took baby steps. You, you know, you spoke certain sections of your life and then you started speaking into the process and writing it down. Just start with something as basic as that and then get on the phone, make the phone calls, send emails, you know, find out are there, you know, beginner classes for trying to be in radio. Let me tell you, there is a lot of information out there to tell you how to get started. And that is what you have to do. And it will give you information on what you should say when you get there. You know, have yourself postured that, you know, when you're marketing yourself, no matter how scared you are, that you're going to posture yourself with the confidence in, in at least knowing that I've done my research. Um, you know, I feel pretty good about, you know, walking in here and just being able to convey it. If you get a no, keep moving until you get a yes. And yes. that's what you just have to do when you're in this industry. Absolutely. Well, wow, Angela, it is hard to believe. We're like down to like four know, minutes of I this know. show. How, how, what, what, any last thoughts, any last things you want to share over the, the next minute as we uh, get ready to close this out? Yes, I would just like to say for young people who want to do this, go for it. You know, the, 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 the world is your oyster. It is time to go out there and really, you know, see what the world is all about. If this is something you're interested in, get the information, get the education behind it. For those of you who are like me that feels like at that time in your life it passed you by, please don't feel that way. Always go back to what you were passionate about. Remember what you loved as a kid. And if you feel unsuccessful or you don't feel complete at your age now, go on and do it. You have so much wisdom now. And at this stage of the game, I figure if we're getting older, we have nothing to lose. Take that fear away and just do it. And if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, write to people that, I, hey, and I'm, I'm open. If anyone wants to write to me, I am on social media. The Angela Foxworth Show, Angela Collins Foxworth is my personal page, The Truth of the Matter, and I just started a new page, The Real A Fox. Write me. I'll give you good information and direction because I would want would have wanted someone to bless me in the same manner. But go for it. Do not give up. Wow. There it is, guys. Angela Foxworth closing it out like a boss. <laughs> great job, Angela. Great, Thank great, you, Sean. great job. <laughs> So, Angela, it's been an absolute honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Um, I can't thank you enough for uh, you know giving us the opportunity to get to learn more about you and for you sharing all of your your wisdom and knowledge about radio and and how people can get on the show. We even got into how people can get started on their own radio That's shows, right. which That's you know right. really got a little bit deeper than I thought we were going to. But yeah, th there are so many opportunities out there. And I hope you guys in the uh, movement community got some great value from this show, because I know I did. Yeah, and I Angela, I can't <laughs> thank you enough for the opportunity. Thank you so much for having me on your show. And Sean, the movement process, listen, anybody who has not gotten this book, you guys have got to get this book. It is life-changing. I literally read it in two hours. It was one day, Tuesday, for 30 minutes, and then the second time it was like an hour and a half, and I was done. It, it is it is. Changing. Hey, and it's on sale. It's on sale right now on Kindle for uh, half off for the Ooh, rest of the year. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, get it. It will so, change So, yes, your absolutely. Life. Yes. So, Aww. thank you. Thank I'm you, honored. Angela. Yes, sir. So, guys, as we're closing this out, remember, if you want to connect more with Angela, you also want to check out her show. She's at www.108praiseradio.com. You can also 
You can also connect with Angela through the Welcome to the Movement community on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com, type in Welcome to the Movement, and join the movement community there. There you can be in the know. You can connect with our hosts, our correction, connect, uh, connect with our guests, and uh, continue these conversations and continue to connect with great, successful people. Uh, until next time, guys, thank you so much to this amazing audience. Thank you guys for understanding the uh technology glitch tonight greatly appreciate all of you thank you so much remember it is all about movement you have to learn to move in order to create it so make sure every day you are taking action steps to move forward with your life thank you guys so much for uh, listening to success movement radio and until next time guys welcome to the movement all right good night 